Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Today is our special guest day, where we will hear from a friend of the ministry who will share their insight and stories on truth in this chaotic world. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Here we are on Guest Thursday, and uh, I've got some very special guests, uh, Tad Monica Jones from here in Denver and Florida. And uh, are you officially Florida residents yet? Or? Yeah. Is that your rest list? <laughs> <laughs> You're on your way to... Uh, from the state of Colorado? Not yet. Not yet. Someday. Yeah. you got to be uh, six months and a day. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So. Figuring that out. They yeah. are, they officially, you have a house in Anna Maria Island, right? Which is yes. an, a newfound favorite of ours. We visited there for the first time last spring with my daughter who happens to be Anna Maria. That was oh. how we found the place. It's so a, yeah. Thank God, come on. <laughs> exactly. It was a beautiful island though. We loved it. Yeah. So we're, uh, Ted and Monica are our uh, first guest uh, of our new studio that I uh, set up a guest area. Uh, and the only thing I forgot about was uh, the microphone that I use is on a boom. And um, I forgot that actually the electronics is in the boom. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we had to jury rig it a little bit uh, to be able to work and it works fine. But I got to get a new mic uh, that will work on our boom, which actually would be nicer so we can get them closer to us to be able to uh, have a recording. But it works fine. And, uh, and then I need a second camera, I guess, to go on to our tripod sounds like it. yes well and then you need linda to decorate the backdrop and for the need, guest area linda yeah. to decorate yeah. <laughs> uh, other than a wall hey the lighting's good <laughs> the lighting's <laughs> great yeah we, we all we all look good and these guys are all tan because they're down from anna maria yeah. that's true <laughs> we don't look so washed out from that white wall that's right so uh, welcome again and uh, tan and monica were on uh, actually uh, many many months ago as they shared their story of how they came to know Christ, how you guys got married, and, and uh, some of the uh, truth of abiding. And uh, we'd love for you to catch up. So catch us up a little bit on your life. It's been uh, many, many months. you got lots of interesting things happen. So what's what's been happening? You go first. Well, let's uh, continue the train of thought around Anna Maria. What's interesting about that island is it's a key on South Tampa Bay, and it fits our personality. Monica and I grew up in small towns in Nebraska, and and it was a big thing, you know, in the farming community when you went to town. I mean, we were both town kids, but when you're in towns of 200 and 1,000, it's like really not, a, you're kind of in a remote location. So being on that island is like, well, when it's going to be a big day today, we're going to go to town. <laughs> and, and, and or we'll, we'll ride our bikes everywhere we need to go. Well, like, uh, you know, it's been five days since we got in the car. <laughs> or I get That's to ride my awesome. bike. I love yeah. that. But it fits our personality and, uh, yeah. you know, I think a focus today was, at least from my point of view, about our relationship. It starts with our relationship with God, but our relationship. And what, when, Mo when Monica and I are walking on the beach and she just says, I just love it here, I just say, wow, God, I'm not that good. You figured this out. Yeah. You know, thank you. For that. Uh, There's nothing better yeah. than knowing she's happy. There's, you know, happy wife, happy life, you know, that's what they say. <laughs> and uh, that's what Anna Marie's meant to us. It's, it's a place of, the idea was it's going to be a legacy house for our kids and grandkids someday. And, uh, but we've been, I've just been surprised at how much it's blessed us in our relationship there. We, we get re, re energized there and, uh, it's just been a beautiful time. I just really, how much time do you guys spend down there? Mm, we really haven't made that decision yet. It's kind of trying to figure it out. I think next year though, we'll go more months at a time at a big chunk of time. Recently, we've just been going a little bit here and there. So now okay. we're, we're trying to find that rhythm. And what, uh, uh, what, what has been a little bit of the rhythm, what have you done? Has it gone, you've gone for, what, two or three weeks at a time and, and come back here two or three, four or five weeks? And... Yeah, well, we've come back a little bit longer. And last fall, we were there for about a month and a half. So we the most has been about a month and a half. And then a couple weeks here, a week there, kind of spread out. Yeah. All three kids are still in Colorado. So uh, we're trying to figure out what that balance looks like. I, I tell people when they ask me how long you're going to be there, I says, listen, all I know is 
there's nothing in Colorado in January, February. I'm kind of beyond my skiing years. And so yeah. when it's cold here, we need to be there. <laughs> That's going to be the And you'll uh, uh, welcome guests then, right? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we don't have a problem. Sure. <laughs> you're, not you're, not gonna, you're not going to leave Linda and I in cold, cold Colorado. Oh, right? no, no. Or, yeah, guests are welcome. <laughs> January. Yeah, we both agree. We love going, spending a few days with ourselves. And then we're like, okay, come on. We need friends. We need yeah. people around us. We need to have some fun because our yeah. place is so wonderful. And to share it with others is what we want to do. Right. But so just that balance of a little bit of our time well, and then friends. Yeah. We're then, about to be empty nesters. So anytime you need a little bit of balance and some friends yeah. to come down, you yeah. just let us All know. Right. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to have you guys down. Yeah. Yeah, we love interviewing people in that regard, Kathy. We'd say to the people, when we figure out they're in the same season of life, we're like, tell us about your routines. We're looking for like best, yeah. practice, best practices, you know? Yes. And so there's a pattern. Temperature's number one. Yes. <laughs> Grand grandkids, where the grandkids are, is always influences uh -huh. people in that season of life. But yeah. yeah, we're going to yeah. figure it out. What's your, uh, <laughs> tell, us, tell us again about what your house is like now that you've been down there and uh, construction, post-construction, so you're actually usable now. So what is that, what is that like? Yeah, we, the, the back up, it, it all started when we were supposed to be officially snowbirders in March of 2020. Think what happened in March yep. of 2020. We, we remember. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody remembers. And so uh, construction was delayed and we finally got in there in the middle of 2020 and you know, travel was difficult during that time. Uh, but it's, there's a signature banyan tree on the island. A lot of people know it, that, that just have gone to Anamaria for a lot of years. And uh, the house is city, you know, has that tree on its lot, on the lot. It's a lot of challenges with it. Uh, sheds a lot, but it is spectacular. And it's a beautiful view. And people will be sitting outside, actually doing our quiet time in the morning on the front porch in our rocking chairs. And people just come by and stop and take pictures of it. And like, we're just, we just wave and <laughs> they're like, do you really live here? <laughs> and so it's gonna, it's, a, it's gonna be a blessing to a lot of people. And so there's one thing I remember saying to the builder, um, we do rent it, you know, in the off season and, and, and he's like, why would you ever, we put a lot into this. Why would you ever rent it? And I said, because we were blessed to be a blessing. I actually quoted the covenant. Mm. I said, I said, we, and we're going to, this house was not for us alone. This right. house was to be a blessing. And he kind of scratched his head. It's okay. <laughs> you know, he's a builder and he built a really nice house. And, uh, but, uh, and he but, said, don't ruin it. Yeah. Just, just take care of it. Why would you let somebody else stay here or rent it out? <laughs> But that's where we're at. Um, we didn't build it for, we built it to be a blessing to others, yeah. our families for sure. Yeah. And uh, well, uh, uh, I think you said that, because I know your your gathering room is big enough for a retreat for us to do. We yeah. just have to, what, rent another, somebody yeah. else's house or hotels. Yeah. hotels yeah, we've got four bedrooms and it's a tight four bedrooms. So that tree takes up so much lot space yeah. um, <laughs> that we had to kind of cram things together. So yeah, the, the, the property's great. Outdoors and indoors both are really great for, can handle larger groups, but accommodations will have to expand a little bit. Yeah. There are a lot of VRBOs down there though. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Even across the street from us, there's a couple that they rent. Yeah. So it's perfect. And yeah. when we built the house, you know, we really love indoor outdoor living because of Denver, but in call in Florida, it, you can't do that in the summer, except for with our property, because it has a big banyan tree, it's about 10 degrees cooler on our property in the summer than it is out on the street. Oh, interesting. So you really can do it. You can really have that indoor outdoor. It's wonderful. And we're just three houses from the beach. And uh, so we, it's great. Yeah. Now, when you guys are down there, uh, what do you enjoy the most about the house and about the area for just you guys? What, what are you enjoying the most? Well, for me, I told Tad, I feel so connected to God on the beach. Some people might say that about the mountains, but yeah. for me, it's the beach. When I get, we'll, we'll get up in the morning and we'll take a walk. And I just feel so close to him. And then at night, we'll sit out there and watch the sunset. And to me, that's just beautiful. And then we have this, they call it a widow's watch up on top. So after the sun has set, Tad and I will go up to the very top and just look at the stars. So living, oh, pretty. yes, because living in Denver, you've got that city, but on Anna Maria, you really have the nature and the stars and you can see them so much more there than in Denver. And so it really, we don't do a lot, which is great. We just enjoy this, the environment around us. One thing, everything in the island is kind of pivots on sunset time. I mean, you either eat early or eat late, depending on when the sunset is. And so we've had enough experience there with friends and family 
that uh, something magical happens when you sit in a semicircle on the sand and uh, get ready to watch the sunset. Your kids actually talk to you. <laughs> and there's something magical. You mean they're not in their iPhones? No, no, I didn't say that. I was going to say we don't we don't have one of those rules where you got to put your iPhones in a basket and everything. They're still on their phones, and so they're in and out. They're checking in and out, you know, in, in terms of being engaged in the conversation. But uh, it really is magic to just sit there and just talk. You sit there for an hour and a half, watch the sunset, and uh, everybody opens up. It's kind of cool. That's yes. great. Yeah. Beautiful. Do your kids go down frequently with you guys, or how does that play out um, with the ages they're all at? Yes. Uh, we've had, have we had them all together yet? Uh, I don't think we have. No, we haven't. The, the one good story about it is our, we have a, a son and daughter and son in order, and our daughter was in Spain for three years. And that's a pivotal year, you know. She, she immersed in this language and the culture, and she was a, taught English there. And then COVID hit, and we were like, you know, you could lose your kid to Europe really easily. I mean, <laughs> they're going to meet what somebody. What was she doing there in Spain? Teaching English classes. Teaching English. So she was in the public school system, and, and it was a great, you know, what I, we call the postgraduate year uh, gap year, which turned into three years. But she grew up. She got self-confidence, and it was a very, a very big blessing to her. What town was she in? Uh, she was in Bilbao, northern okay. Spain. It's famous for the Guggenheim Museum that's there, if you ever See, mm. You've seen pictures of it. it's beautiful. She has a love for Spain now, but it was it was the magical point of the island when she finally was able to travel. She was there 14 months without uh, ability to travel. She we got her to we got her to Anna Maria with a couple of her college friends and high uh, high school friend, and it was just she just. She'd been cooped up wearing a mask for 14 months. Spain was pretty harsh. Mm -hmm. And she just one day was walking out of the house. She goes, man, God, I love America. And all her friends stopped and said, did you hear what she just said? And I said, yes, we did. And it was the experience of the island with her friends and just being at peace, going to the beach every night, going out to dinner. And she really re-embraced American culture, you know, and it's really what got her back. She made that decision, you know, two, or two three months later, she said, I'm coming home. And we're like, yes. Mm, yay. <laughs> yes. So that was a great experience with her and her friends. And our son's going there next week with a bunch of his friends. And um, so they're blessed by it, too. Yeah. What is she? Uh, is she in Denver now? Yeah. She's tutoring now. And she's, uh, we just love to see her, you know, kind of prosper and confidence and uh, living with some friends in an apartment and living the downtown life, you know. Yeah. She's like 26, going to be 27. And she's, uh, she came home a new girl. We just uh, we're just happy for the experience that she had there. Yeah, beautiful. she's thriving. Yeah, that's beautiful. So, um, uh, as you look at your uh, biting and um, uh, you know, Monica, you could particularly share. Uh, uh, we have a we have kind of a, a home uh, a church small group, and um, you've been uh, I know it led to look at God's power, um, and she shared. Uh, that she was led to uh, Proverbs uh, 11 and 12, uh, and kind of kind of get, God just downloaded a list for you mm -hmm. uh, that actually you shared with us. And I've God said for me, pay attention to that, and I've been processing that personally as well as how does that impact uh, something I was uh, studying at a retreat now, which is grace, which is we're going to do in uh, Croatia, mm -hmm. and the material that you gave is part of that retreat. Oh, wow. Uh, that's cool. So share, oh, a little, that's great. Share, share a little bit about that, about how you, how you received it, and, and what are the things that, that meant and, uh, thanks to you, which sure. has been now important to us. Yeah, that's great. So I've been studying God's power for about a month and a half, maybe almost two months. And what I love about home church is they'll, pro you guys will probe questions and give me ideas of what to dig into and things that I would think I should have thought of, but I hadn't. And uh, so understanding God's power is in us always. And so one of the questions was, well, what do we do to stop that power? So I went back and I was digging in and finding all kinds of things and getting excited about it. And what are we doing to stop the power? What are the different things? And um, came back and started sharing it with our home church. And one of the individuals says, well, what is, what's he speaking to you specifically about that list? Because some of the things in the list are, uh, pride gets in the way of the power, uh, reacting too quickly and not being patient enough and just jumping ahead of God, that affects the power. In Nahum, I was learning about trust 
And it was so interesting. You would think that that would be a natural thing for me to then go back and say, well, what do you want me to focus on, Lord? But I hadn't thought about it because I was just too engrossed in mm. all of the things that I was learning. So I said, well, let me go back and find out. And so he, um, Nahum was what came up. And it was, for me, about trust. Even in a difficult situation, do you trust me? And what is so interesting about that is prior to getting that, about a month ago, he kept, I was just in the house, probably doing dishes, cooking, and several times over a few days, he said to me, out of the blue, do you trust me? I'm like, um, yeah. And then he would say it again. And I started thinking, okay, is there something, Lord, that you are wanting to tell me? Because I think I trust you. And so it's just been this journey of trust. And now I'm understanding why. And it's because of what our youngest son is going through. Mm -hmm that he was preparing me to trust. And um, yeah, and I do um, much more than um, I would have a year ago when he shared with us the struggles that he's having. I didn't go to fear, I didn't go to panic. I just like, okay, here we go again. So um, it was just this journey, not knowing he was gonna take me from power to trust to do you know how much I love you? Because those two things go hand in hand, the mm -hmm. trust and love. If, if you know how much God loves you, you can, you can trust him. And so um, one thing that's been really great, though, in these last few days when we've gotten this revelation from our youngest son is I have two journals. One is my regular abiding journal, and the other one is prophetic words that have been given to us, either we got them or somebody else gave them to us. And so I went back the last couple of days and just was reading through them. And one of those words was from Linda. She um, called me one day and she was excited because she had been seeing eagles everywhere. And yeah. that, was what, that was the gift that God was giving her, was just seeing these eagles. And she called us and she said, Monica, I saw this eagle and instantly the Lord brought Blake's mind, name to mind. And can I share that yeah, in my journal real quick? So um, she, she saw an eagle swoop down in front of her and instantly got Blake's name. And what the Lord told her was, Blake doesn't believe how powerful I am. And um, she said that God had told her, this is where I am taking Blake. And so when she gave me that, I wrote that down and then um, I processed it. And then the Lord gave me Isaiah. Um, about um, soaring on eagle's wings and trusting him and having peace and walking and running. And um, I, so I wrote that down too and got confirmation and it was about Blake. So I remember just drawing a picture of an eagle. I have it posted in my quiet time, which is in my closet on a mirror. So I see it all the time. And it's like, I'm so thankful I wrote that down because I think I could have easily forgotten it. And right now I need it because it's a good reminder. We're here a year later and we're dealing with similar things, but this is a promise. It's a reminder and I need to just continue to focus on that. Yeah. So that's... Yeah. yeah. And tell uh, a little bit uh, for context, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about Blake, you know, what uh, his age, what he's doing right now. And then, what you're praying for him as God is speaking about that because it's on your heart because he's your, your child. Yeah. Do you, do you want to share it or do you want me to? <laughs> I'll start. You can jump okay. in. Uh, basically, Blake uh, is, is had trouble with anxiety. And uh, he had originally gone to Baylor for a semester and then came home and he was he couldn't eat. He was so, stomach was so upset and had digestive issues. And so he struggled with anxiety for recent years. And uh, it's basically, uh, he came to, home and went to uh, see Denver for a while and then um, really wanted to integrate into a more typical campus life and so he's been up at CSU um, but it's been a struggle I mean he's taken a semester or two off here or there or, or taken a light load and and uh, we're just he's just um, the enemy's got has got a grip on him and it's uh, he's believing lies and we're trying to affirm him and a lot of part of his family dynamic that he's grown up with is just probably planted a lot of these seeds but then um, he's he so we're all we're all in recovery here. I mean, this is not just about Blake's challenges. It's like for me that I'm going through a separate process process of understanding kindness because mm -hmm. I'm the hard driver and uh, and you know, a perfectionist mindset and performance mindset and those things get projected onto my kids and and so and Blake we found out how sensitive he was and we didn't realize that through the whole process. So I'm 
you know, in Galatians 5, learning about kindness and about how when I say things, how Blake internalizes them and takes them very seriously. And, uh, and so I'm growing in that regard, and Monica's growing in the trust regard. And what else would you add? Um, well, we were in Florida when he called us, and we were supposed to be there for two weeks. And after the first week, he, we could tell he needed us. So we got on a plane that night. And, you know, he just shared some things he's been doing the last couple months that are definitely destructive, that um, are cause to be concerned about where he's at and what he's doing and, and seeing that he has kind of slipped back into some crutches that um, are really unhealthy. But um, we just uh, went, I, I was telling Tad that after he told us, we just embraced him, you know, because he had shame. And I said to Tad, I'm really understanding the unconditional love that God has for us because he could tell, and that's why I told him, I said, Blake, no shame. I said, no matter what you ever would tell us, we love you so much. Mm -hmm. And it really is the heart of God. And he really prepared us because of our abiding. He prepared us for this time. And I can see it over the last several months when he told me a couple months ago, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Because you're going to get a blow thinking, He's moving. We just kept thinking, Blake, you know, there was some, he wasn't completely there, but he had made progress yeah. over the year. Yeah. And he was he was clipping along. He was making progress. But he was in Fort Collins. He was alone. And so he would come home on weekends, and we thought he seemed happy. He seemed like he was doing okay. Um, he said he was doing good in some classes. So it really, in that moment, threw us for a loop. One of the things... Um... I think this is the case for a lot of kids nowadays. Uh, the world is such a complicated place compared to what it was. And a lot of kids are, are struggling with anxiety. And one of the abiding retreats we did with you, Rich, uh, was in regards to just, you know, really what's going on here in the world. I mean, are we taking things, is it an attack of the enemy or is it just, you know, the way the world yeah, is? Right. I mean, the world's in entropy, it's in destruction. That's it's right. like, how do we cope with just general, you know? Yeah, we're not exempt from that, right? Right, yeah. yeah, you know, general, you know, just environmental things, or if it's a, the attack of the enemy, and then throw COVID in there. I mean, these kids that were in college, their 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 college year was wrecked, yeah. year and a half, whatever yeah. it was, and so for someone like Blake who uh, struggles with why why aren't things just and righteous, and and why do I have to put up with unrighteousness in this world, and you know, it's you know trite verses like oh you're in the world you're not of it. They just don't, they're not, they're not penetrating. They, they have to understand and process what it means to deal with the complexities of the world nowadays. And uh, our tactics <laughs> aren't necessarily the best. I mean, that's why we're in the Word, asking God, uh, you know, how we're supposed to communicate to Blake. Like I've said for years, you're in the world, you're not of it. And that's just like right over his head, you know. It's like it didn't mean anything to him. And so now I'm understanding myself how to help someone understand how to deal with the world is, uh, in, in my case, is showing him kindness. And so it's like, you don't have, you know, when, when you see the failures of someone else, whether it's a professor or, you know, some, a friend who did you wrong, it's like, when you get to the point where, like, you understand the reason they're behaving that way is that they're hurt or, or they have their own little issues or dysfunctions, and you can feel compassion, you now understand the mind of Christ. And he's not there yet, and I still struggle with those kind of things, but it's basically learning to see some, a situation in the world and just and understand how you're going to react, not take it personal. Not, you know, we talk about getting angry, but not you know, taking it to wrath. It's like, it's okay to, to call out injustice. It's not okay to perseverate on it, go to bed with it and wrestle with it and just you know, feel like you're always the victim. It says that God is not telling us to do that. He's saying, trust him through that process. And so... I, you know, we celebrate the victories in Blake's life that are forthcoming, but it is tough right now to know what he's having to go through to give that testimony someday, where he's going to be able to help somebody else that's going through the same thing. Yeah. And we can believe that because of words that have been given to us and what God has said to us through this journey, that we can trust him. He's, he's working on this with Blake. Yeah. And, I, and I also um, wanted to say that because we are reflecting Christ more in us. I know Blake feels completely safe to tell us anything. And he confirmed that a couple of days ago because I asked him, I said, you do feel like you could tell us anything? And he said, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And that's that's a wonderful place to be in. So that's an example of, we know where our relationship's going with him. It's going to be as good as any parent-child relationship. It's just good. They're really work in progress. and But there'll be fruit from it. There'll be fruit from the trial and there'll be 
fruit from trusting God through the process. Yeah. So it you, sounds like y'all are seeing fruit in all of you and in oh, Blake yeah. as well as in each of you as God's mm-hmm. using this to grow and restore and redeem. Yeah. Yeah, that's yes. right. And I think because we are abiding, we can see it that way. I think if we weren't, we would only mm-hmm. get in the thick of things and look at all the bad and not see that right. he will restore this. He said he will. Mm-hmm. He always does. And with that, you can just take that to the bank. And that right. that comes with abiding. That comes with that that intimate one-on-one relationship with the Lord, knowing who He is, who He says He is, and who we are in Him, and that's that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And going back to uh, you know Proverbs eleven and twelve, you uh, you know you got in there, you saw things a little bit uh, fresh, mm-hmm. uh, and you actually you kind of gave you a list and you kind of wrote them all down mm-hmm. because. Um, when I was in it, it was like, hey, Monica, could you send me that list? So that'll, yes. <laughs> that'll kickstart me a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so how did that how did that happen that you got this list? And uh, why, did, why did that become so meaningful to you, which actually you were able to give it away immediately? Because it was like, God said, here, pay attention to that. Well, gosh, how I got to that in that moment, I'm not really certain, but I was using the concordance. I was going into the power. I was asking the question. Uh, why no power yeah and he just gave me a verse and then from that verse I went to another verse to another verse and I I ended up coming up with gosh a list of 15 uh what what is sown if we sow certain things and then what is the reward so reward so reward and that's what that's how you're going to gain the power and that's was the typical that was the list yeah yeah and the uh you know, if I'm doing the study on grace, uh, got led to a verse of sowing and reaping. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and then he said, I uh, remember what Monica shared about Proverbs 11 and 12. And she actually has a, a full list that I'd like you to pursue and understand about that concept. And, you know, so uh, when you said it, and, and this is where the spiritual dimension of, of the Holy Spirit guiding and leading even even each other she was just sharing and God, God says you know, pay, pay attention to that um, I want you to I want you to rec- I want you to receive it rich and then I want you to be able to take what she's sharing and share it even further about sowing and reaping and what that means and uh, so then um, I just said hey Monica send me send me your list which she did uh, which then uh, was able for me to leapfrog from that. I didn't actually go back and have to learn it all. I could just say, well, I'll take what you learned and I'll go further with it. And God says, that's how it works. You know, it is, and it's, it's kind of funny because what you sowed, immediately I got to reap a little bit of it and then I'm going to sow a little bit of it. And so it's really amazing, you know, truth of how beautiful the Spirit works to reveal something to you. Because I know I remember it meant something to you. Uh, and you shared how cool this was, and you, you I, and I said, I, I've looked at that verses a lot. I've never seen that before, uh, but now I'm in a, I'm, I get to see it. You know, yeah. so it's, awesome. it's really a, a privilege, uh, yeah. you know, to look at that. And and one of the things uh, you're describing there too, it's the privilege of being in abiding community together. Yeah. yeah. And how God uses us, each of us, to speak to each other. You know, and and just really flesh those things out and inspire and encourage. And I, it makes me think of Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. And, you know, it wraps up in that. There's a lot of let us statements in that. But but remembering to get together to encourage one another in the word. And that's exactly what you did. And as you did that, then the ripple effects are, are what's playing out now. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so as we, uh, uh, you know, understand that, um, we'd like to come back. Uh, Ted, you made a statement, uh, and I know both of you have experienced this and are experiencing it, and we are too. Uh, you talk about having the mind of Christ. Um, we'd like to go a deeper next week into that element of it. Of you know, what does that mean to you? And particularly, I'd like you to I'd like you to pursue more this comment that he could share anything with you, and he says, I I really uh, understand that. I believe that's going to be a key part of his healing for him to keep understanding that, which means he's gonna share more with you, which means you can share more with him, and he's safe. Uh, So that we'll we'll talk a little bit about that because you really said it, and if we all could receive that, God says, 
you can share with me. That's good. <laughs> Go ahead. You're you're safe. You're good. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll understand that. So thanks so much for uh, bringing us up to date and sharing that with us. Uh, and we're going to pick pick a little bit more up next week with that depth of it, uh, and talk a little bit about more how that's impacting, uh, particularly Blake and. I know, and now he's living with you now at home, right? Yeah. For the summer. He'll, for summer school, it's all online, so he'll be able to live with us. Yeah, so yeah. that'll be a great environment. So yes. uh, Kathy will uh, uh, pick that up next week, and uh, it'll, it'll be great. Excellent. Looking quite forward fun. to it. All right. Thanks so much for joining later. us, everyone. And um, be sure to tune in next week as we continue this conversation. Thanks again, yeah. guys. All right. We'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us for today's That's episode good. of Come and See your podcast for truth in a My world regrets. of chaos. <laughs> Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.